Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Mole Calculations 4. Um, gases and molar volumes. Um, I would like to have a look at uh, how you do these questions, some examples and some definitions. Let's start with this molar volume first. What is that about? That is the gas equivalent of GFM. We invented the concept of GFM because, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, scales don't measure in the number of particles that are in the beaker. They measure in grams. And the problem with solids in chemistry is that one million atoms of carbon do not weigh the same as one million atoms of aluminium. So we need to compensate for that by inventing this GFM, this gram formula mass. Once upon a time, we actually taught you to work out how many atoms are in a certain mass, but that's been dumbed down and removed from the course. It's called Avogadro's uh, number, if you're interested. There is a set number of things in a mole, but um, I digress. So let's stick with this for a second. This is a GFM, and it comes out in grams. The clue's in G, because it's gram formula mass. This here is a similar idea for gases only, because, as you can imagine, we're not really interested in the volume of the gas. We're actually interested in how many atoms of the gas are free to react. But because we can't sit and count atoms, please don't try that at home, okay? It's a fruitless task. Because you can't sit and count atoms, even with a very, very good microscope, instead, what we did was we worked out the quantity that one mole of a gas would be as a volume. So that's the definition of molar volume. It's the amount of space taken up by one mole of any gas. You notice I said any there. So that means, for example, you could have hydrogen, which is the lightest gas, or you could have radon, which is one of our heaviest gases. And if you've got one mole of each of these at the same temperature and pressure, it will be the same amount of space. Talking about which, I wonder how much space that is to try and wrap your head around about it. It's about the size of a large beach ball, or about the same size as 11 two-liter bottles of juice, which means the answer that you should get is round about 22-ish liters. That's the amount of space taken up by one mole of gas. So 22 liters per mole. That's the slightly odd unit, which looks like the inverse of moles per liter, but it's just a coincidence. That's liters per mole. That's the units for molar volume, guys. I am tempted not to give you the triangle. Uh, linking uh, volume, molar volume and moles together. You can probably work it out if you remember that a pair actually means divided by, if you know your maths. So we're actually saying litres divided by moles. So that's like volume over number of moles, and that's what more of a volume is. I've just given you the triangle, haven't I? I just said I wouldn't do that. Um, that's okay. Use it if you wish. It's optional. You don't have to. I'm going to show you a proportion method to, uh, to do it. But if you like your triangles, go for it. Um, I'm going to start with an example of this, and we'll see where we're going from there. Let me zoom in a wee touch on this. This is an exam question. Uh, it says, calculate the mass in grams of carbon dioxide produced by the combustion of 200 centimetres cubed of methane in excess oxygen. Now, at first, this might not look like a gas volume question because they're actually asking for a mass. I know that. But look at the type of data you've been given. That is a volume. Now, they don't seem to be compatible at first, uh, so therefore you have a choice on how to go about this. I'll do it proportionately first, and then I'll shift everything into moles, and you'll see we still get the same answer, whichever way around you get it. It's a relatively easy two marks. They have very kindly told us what the molar volume is. They haven't even, though, typical SQA, uh, they've made it a little bit more difficult by not saying the molar volume is. It just says the volume of one mole of methane gas is 24. Grand. Now... That means we're only interested in two things out of this calculation, and we can ditch the rest. We're only interested in CO2, and we're only interested in methane. Uh, excess oxygen means we can discard this, and it doesn't even talk about the water, so we'll scratch that as well. For proportion, what I do first is I get the mole ratio, and I'm seeing one mole to one mole for our two chemicals. We'll write it underneath there. Now, that is no good to us because it doesn't ask or give you moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this one mole here into the type of data associated with it. It be, oh, it, sorry, I swore. I need to put some money in the swear jar. The amount of, uh, the type of data associated with this chemical here, which if we read the question, it's a volume. So let's turn this moles into a volume. 
and we can do that because we've been told that 24 liters you notice by the way that's centimeters cubed and that's liters so let's make them both the same unit i'm just going to keep it in liters uh, for s easy counting, so I'm going to take that and turn it into 0 0.2. I'm going to divide that by 1,000. So 0. Point, uh, uh, let's no, let's let's do this this way first. Sorry, I do apologise. Try and think ahead of myself. Always a bad mistake. One mole is 24 liters, as far as methane is concerned. It's told us that. That's what the molar volume is. What do you reckon we're going to do with this the carbon dioxide? Now it's tempting to turn that into, this is why this question is so devious, it's tempting to turn that into a, a volume as well because it even says, look, it's a gas. Yeah, turn me into a volume. Don't bother. Go back and read the question and they want a mass in grams. So let's take that one mole and let's turn it into a number of grams. Now, what is one mole in grams? I just mentioned it earlier on. It is, of course, the GFM which is, they even tell you that they are 44 to save you're working it out. So 44 grams. So what have I done here, guys? I've looked at this. I've selected the two chemicals I'm interested in. I've looked at the mole ratio between them. Just happens to be one to one here. And then I have turned these moles into the types of information that the question is asking for. We're nearly there. I know it seems a wee bit long-winded, but we are so close to the end. What we do now is we uh, place an unknown in the correct column. We're looking for a mass in grams of carbon dioxide. Here's the carbon dioxide column. Let's pop a question mark here. And the only thing that's missing is the number here, um, which will associate with this. You see, 24 liters of methane would make 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Can you tell me what goes here? Hopefully you're shouting at the screen and saying, well, it's this. But let's, we have to turn it into litres because that's litres. So let's turn that into 0 0.2. And then that is our question mark. And now we can go ahead and solve for the question mark. If you haven't seen me do this in any of my other videos, it's a little bit of maths called cross multiplication because it turns out in mathematics... Go and ask your maths teacher. I've just realised I've gone off the screen there, sorry. Amateur hour for camera work. There we go. Um, go and ask your maths teacher why this works. This number here times that number there equals this number here times that number there. That's why it's called cross multiplication. So question mark times 0 0.2 equals 20... Uh, question mark times... Oh my goodness, hey. How many times can you make a mistake in a video? I've already started this once before, so I'm not going to start again. Sorry. Question mark times 24. Follow the lines, hey. Equals 0 0.2 times 44. Let's solve for question mark. That will be 0 0.2 times 44 over 24. Let me just work that one out for you. And according to my calculator, that comes out to be 0 0.37. If we round it up, 367 actually. Let's keep three significant figures. I'll go into the reason for that in another video. 0 0.367. Uh, once again, now, hold on. If we go back and read the question, you'll see it actually specifies the unit in the question. So I will put nothing here. I will not put any units at all because I put the wrong unit in. I run the risk of losing one of my hard-earned marks, even though it bugs me not to put units in there. So let's just leave it at that. Now, if you didn't like the whole proportion thing, no problem. Let me go through this a slightly different way. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn things into moles. So we have been given 0 0.2 litres of methane. Let's turn that into a number of moles. And that'll tell you how many moles of methane you've got. We can use the mole ratio again, though, and that'll tell us how many moles of CO2 we make. And then we use moles mass and GFM, and out pops the same answer in terms of the mass of GFM. So let's just do it. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, molar volume equals volume over number of moles. So if we solve for moles here, moles equals volume over molar mo vo volume over molar volume. Blame me, that's difficult to say. Which is 0 0.2, that's 200 centimetres cubed, over 24. Which comes out to be 0 0.008333, repeating. That's the number of moles of um, methane, 
which will also be exactly the same number of moles of CO2. So let's use moles mass in GFM to calculate uh, what that will weigh in grams. So we take that number of moles, multiply it by the GFM, which they have indeed given you, 44. As my calculator just decides to shrink for some reason. That's weird. And the answer, not very surprisingly, is exactly the same, 0 0.367. I was just about to write grams there. <laughs> Let's not bother. So, two different methods, proportionality or turn everything into moles. I know we've got a very bright person in the class who loves the moles approach, but we also have loads of very bright people who are happy with the um, uh, proportionality as the phone rings. Excuse me. So that's the first type of calculation. Let's take a look at a multiple choice, which doesn't look as if it's solvable at first at all, but it's totally doable. It's just a classic SQA technique of dressing a question up um, and making it look more difficult than it actually is. Although it's quite sneaky, this one. Can we zoom in? No, not too much. My goodness. Okay, number 13. That's what we're looking for. You'll see uh, number 13s around the place quite a lot. They vary uh, the wording. Um, and this one here, they're saying under a particular set of conditions of temperature and pressure, that just means the molar volume of all these gases is identical. Now, that's almost a superfluous statement. You don't really need that. Because as soon as you see that, the clever people are hunting down, oh, what's the molar volume then? They come to the end of the question, and it doesn't tell you a number for the molar volume, so they get stumped. So let's go back to the actual question. What is it asking you? Which of the following gases would occupy the largest volume? Now, because I said that the molar volume for any gas is identical to each other, you can actually do a maths cheat whereby you can directly change moles into volumes. You don't need to worry. So one mole, you can just call it, well, one centimeter cubed. They are proportional to each other. I know they're not identical, but they are proportional. So what this question is actually asking is which one here of these answers has the largest number of moles? Because the larger the moles, the larger the volume will be. So what, that's what this question is ask, asking for. I've seen other questions which have sometimes asked you to match one of these answers to a certain quantity of a different gas. And of course, they don't give you it in moles. They'll give you it in grams or whatever. So if you turn it into moles, just like I'm about to do with all of these, then you can work out which one matches, or in this case, which one has the largest number of moles. Um, you've got to be careful with the Hoff Brinkles. Please watch your Hoff Brinkles. If you're not in my class, you have no idea what I'm raving about. These are the diatomic elements because they come about in twos. Now, these are all masses. These are in grams. So, therefore, I'm going to turn them all into moles by simply doing a mass over GFM. So, this is 2. Uh, sorry, I apologise. 0 0.2 for the hydrogen over 2. I was trying to think ahead. That's... I need to go home. So, the answer to that is 0 0.1. So, there's 0 0.1 moles of hydrogen gas. Let's do the next one. Uh, carbon dioxide is uh, 44. It's GFM. So, 0 0.44 over 44. Um, let me just double check that my calculator. My head is telling me that's 0 0.01. Um... So that's seriously smaller than that. Let's do neon. Uh, the mass here is 0 0.6, and the GFM for neon, I can't quite remember it offhand, is 20. So 0 0.6 over 20. Uh, it's, do you know what? If it wasn't late in the day, I really would be doing these in my head. 0 0.03. So this is looking like our leader at the moment, but let's just check for sure. 0 0.8 grams of argon. Argon's another one I can't quite remember. Argon is 40, of course it is. So 0.8 over 40, uh, 0 0.02 for that one. There you go, boom, that's your answer. That one there is in fact the largest volume, despite not being the largest weight, of course, because it's moles that count in chemistry, not mass. Um, so there you go, folks. Uh, turn all your gases into uh, moles, and then your moles are proportional to the volume because the molar volume for all of these gases is identical. And even if you don't know the molar volume, it doesn't matter. You can just go with proportionality and out pops your answer. Let's find one last one, which frankly is a bit of a nightmare one. Right, we've got a, a reaction 
that can be used to measure the concentration of hypochlorite ions in a sample of bleach. SQA love asking about hypochlorite. Um, so here, what you're doing, you're reacting this chemical here, hydrogen peroxide, with the ClO- ion, which is the hypochlorite ion, and we make water, Cl- ions, and oxygen gas. And it says, by measuring the volume of oxygen given off, the concentration of bleach can be calculated. So let's spin down to the actual question. It says here, we got 80 centimetres cubed of oxygen gas from 5 centimetres cubed of bleach. Calculate the concentration of the hypochlorite ions in the bleach. They give you the molar volume. So we're probably going to need to use that in this one. Now, if we go back up to here for a second again, the actual equation, this is a one mole. We're actually that, actually, technically speaking, one mole um, and one mole. So the mole ratio is one to one here. So one hypochlorite would produce one oxygen. Let's just take this down to here so we can see it clearer. One hypochlorite ion is proportional to one oxygen. One mole, that is. Now, we weren't given the number of moles of oxygen gas. We were given a volume. So, I think, here's me saying earlier on, I don't like triangles. I'd be tempted to actually turn that into a number of moles. What we could do is we could do it the other way around. We could keep this as one mole. Um, and this could be changed into 24 litres, of course. Let's do it proportionately. So one mole of hypochlorites will release 24 litres. Why 24? Because the molar volume is 24. And that is one mole. But that's not much use to us. Now, this one here, I would normally say to you, look at the type of data given to you in the question and turn this one mole into this type of data. But check that out. It's a concentration. They do give you a volume. They give you a volume of the bleach. I think we just keep that as moles. And once we've worked out how many moles of hypochlorite there is, because we know the volume of the solution, we can then calculate the concentration. Make your work for your three marks here, that's for sure. It's like a weird hybrid of a gas volume and a titration almost concentration question. So anyway, where are we going from here? One, two numbers here. Um, where does the question mark go? Well, the question mark will be in the hypochlorite because that's what they're asking about. So we will need our third number over here so we can work the cross-multiplication thing. What third number goes here? Third number is, I'm hoping you can tell me by looking at the question, it's 80 because that's the oxygen gas column and this is the oxygen gas column. Got to turn it into litres, of course, to match up with that. How irritating. So let's do cross-multiplication and solve for this. That times that. Let's see if I can get it right this time. Equals that times that. So I'm in danger of going off the page. Let me just roll up a wee fraction. There we go. So that means question mark times 24. Get it right here this time. 1 times 0 0.08. Solve for question mark. Put that on the bottom line there. Excuse me a second. According to my calculator, 0 0.003333, repeating, that's the number of moles of hypochlorite. But we want a concentration. So let's write down at the bottom of the page here, let's sneak in concentration equals moles over volume. And that will be divided by 5, which of course has got to be over 1,000. How many footery steps to get your three marks? So we're going to divide by 0 0.05. Okie dokie. Gives us a concentration, which sounds reasonably good for our sanity check, of 0 0.06. What's the accuracy given to us in the question? Two significant figures. Let's take this to two significant figures as well then. So 0 0.067. Will I write a unit in here? Let's look back at the question. No, I will not write anything in here. Come on, behave yourself, paper. I will not write anything in here because it gives the unit in the question. So, to recap, guys, uh, let's zoom out first of all before you recap anything, hey? There we go. Uh, gases have their own uh, quantity called a molar volume, and it lets you know how many litres are occupied by every mole of any gas. So it applies to all gases at the same temperature and pressure. 
and I just ran through three different ways of um, three different types of question that go with it. I showed you the proportionality way, or you can of course turn things into moles if you prefer doing that. I can completely see why. Thanks for listening to this. This turned out to be longer than I thought. Thank you for your patience. Bye-bye. If this has been useful, by the way, you might want to consider clicking the subscribe button.